This presentation discusses various ways in which you, as a person responsible for organising a workshop, can help ensure that the workshop is as successful as possible. Whilst it is part of the hazard identification module, the issues covered are equally applicable to other types of workshop including HAZOPs, what if sessions, bow tie analysis workshops, etc. We're going to focus on three main aspects of the workshop. Preparation, getting the best out of people, and keeping records. Adequate preparation for your workshop is imperative. As Benjamin Franklin said, by failing to prepare, you are preparing to fail. This slide lists a number of things you will need to think about in advance. First of all, why are you thinking of holding this workshop? What do you want to find out? Why do you want to find it out? What will the information you generate be used for? And by whom? Are you sure that a workshop is actually the best way of achieving this? Workshops work best when you want to pool ideas, check facts, collect opinions from a number of different people. In other situations, it might be more effective and efficient, for example, to produce a draft document and circulate it for review, collating and incorporating the comments rather than necessarily holding a workshop. Having established why you are planning this workshop, the rest of your preparation covers how, who, what, where and when. How wide is your scope of study? What and um, where are the boundaries? How will you achieve your objectives? What method is best suited to what you're trying to achieve? Do you want to just have a free-form brainstorming session? Do you need some form of structured method? Are you going to use some particular checklist, matrix, software or other tool? Is there a relevant standard that's suited to your specific circumstances or do you need to customize your approach? Have you used this method before? Do you need to try it out beforehand? Who do you need? To be involved, what will they bring to the table? You need to strike a balance between having all the necessary disciplines, knowledge and experience present, but not having so many people that the meeting becomes slow, cumbersome and some individuals are only able to participate for the short periods that are relevant to their uh, specific areas of expertise. What information do you need to have to hand during the workshop? It might include drawings, maps, technical reports, etc. Do you need access to the internet or your company's intranet or some form of document management system? When do you need to hold this workshop? What are your timescales for the deliverables? When are all the essential participants going to be available? Where are you going to hold the workshop? It, it depends on the number of people present, but also think about whether it be an advantage to choose a venue which is away from the workplace. The advantage being that people will be less distracted and there will be fewer interruptions, but it may mean that you don't necessarily have all the information immediately to hand. Always try to make sure the room's comfortable and never underestimate the importance of quality refreshments. Make sure that you give people plenty of notice about the workshop and give them clear instructions about when and where it will be held. It might be a good idea to circulate a briefing note or some other form of pre-reading in advance of the workshop to cut down on the amount of introductory explanation that's needed on the day. A successful workshop requires all of the individuals present to interact effectively with each other and to achieve a set of common goals. As a skilled facilitator, therefore, you need to get the best out of all people present by being prepared, as we've already covered, but also by being flexible and patient. For their part, the participants need to feel valued, safe, respected, welcome and, and not confused. This slide lists some of the important parts which we all have a part to play in in realising these aims. Effective facilitation begins even before the workshop starts when people arrive. Make sure you greet them warmly, introduce yourself, make them feel welcome to the place. Start the session with an introduction. What are the objectives? What are you hoping to achieve? Why are they here? And then move on to what the particular method entails, the various steps in the process. Also cover the schedule for the day and when you expect to finish. Don't forget a safety briefing, directions to toilets and any ground rules such as switching off mobile phones. Even if people know each other, go round the table and ask each individual to introduce themselves. Make a note of their names so that you can direct questions at them later. And for large workshops, it can be a good idea to have name place cards for each person. 
If the workshop can reach a consensus about a decision, then it's more likely to be accepted by everyone and everyone else. So as a facilitator, it's your job not to allow any one individual to dominate the discussion. Get everyone used to contributing by going round the room at regular intervals asking for opinions. Call on people with specific expertise to provide input to the issue at hand. Encourage anecdotes on occasion and where relevant to the specific issue. Promote participation by asking direct questions, asking for explanations, or asking individuals to phrase comments for the meeting records and make sure you keep eye contact with everyone. You also need to make sure that you are independent. You can give your opinion and contribute ideas as a member of the team but you're not there to impose your will on others and you should not really ask leading questions of people. As part of the preparation you should have planned how long the workshop should take and at what stage you should have reached by quarter halfway through the session. As the meeting progresses, make sure that you monitor progress against your plan. Don't worry if you start slow. Things will always tend to, to speed up as people become more familiar with the method. And once you've discussed a particular issue, it doesn't need to be repeated again in depth if it comes up again for another part of the session. However, do make sure you have a backup plan in mind just in case it becomes apparent that you are behind schedule. Be prepared to take shortcuts, be strict about parking issues that can't be resolved for now, so follow those up outside of the meeting. And you can also review later parts of the workshop se session by exception, asking, you know, how is this different from the section we looked at earlier? That said, however, it's important not to rush people unnecessarily. Stick to the point, but allow some degree of relevant debate. Some people like to think out loud and work things through, and this also helps to promote buy-in and confidence in the workshop. If you rush things through, you run the risk of missing out important details. As the facilitator, you should have your hand gently on the tiller. You're not driving a steamroller. Pay attention to the discussion in the room. It can be difficult if you have an inter internal commentary applying pressure such as completing all the material in time or being able to answer difficult questions that are outside of your technical area, being required to defend the workshop methodology. But while it's important to be thinking ahead, you also need to focus on what is being said right now. You need to be aware of the energy levels in the room. Take regular breaks. Check if you've got anyone who's a smoker or who may need to leave the room for other reasons, such as set prayer times. Make sure the room is sufficiently ventilated and well lit and that people have got access to drinks. Regain focus by summarising what you've just covered and where you're up to. De depending on the nature of your workshop, you may also be able to vary the activities. For example, interspersing discussion sessions with short periods of individual reading, review and comment, or splitting the group into smaller teams to focus on different aspects. All of the participants need to feel that their contribution is worthwhile and valid. But at the same time, they also need to feel safe in your hands. They need to feel that you know what you're doing. Earn their respect by being clear, consistent, stick to the timings you promised at the beginning. Avoid negative body language. Don't roll your eyes and sigh, no matter how much you might actually want to. Also, be careful with humour. It's acceptable and sometimes it's even a good idea to use, to, especially to put people at their ease. But be aware, you can't make it personal. You need to be aware of potentially offensive comments, etc. Finally, you should always finish your session with some clear conclusions. So make sure you leave time for this summarize what you've set out to do and whether you've achieved this, run through the list of main findings and any actions, and explain to all involved what happens next. For example, will they receive further instruction from you, further information? Will they be asked to review the output from the meeting? Don't do as I did recently and allow the workshop to overrun so much you finish up running out of the door to catch a plane without bringing things through to a proper close. Above all, you need to remember that you are a professional and that you are capable of completing this task. Calm confidence without being arrogant is an essential characteristic of a successful workshop facilitator. Your preparation should mean that even if things go wrong, you can deal with them effectively. So relax. Keeping detailed, accurate records of the workshop is essential. Never trust things to memory. Always write them down during the workshop or record them in some other way. If you choose to take notes yourself, you've got more control over how things are recorded, but you then run the risk of missing an important point if the discussion continues while you are writing down what has just been said. Employing a dedicated scribe to take notes frees you up to facilitate and ask all the questions, but not 
everything may always get written down as you would wish and you might find yourself yelling instructions across the table at the unfortunate scribe when you should be facilitating the session. Placing the scribe immediately next to you might allow for you to give them quick, quiet pointers if you see that they're missing important information. It sounds obvious, but workshops progress more slowly if the person taking notes is not familiar with the industry, circumstances and terminology being used, and also if they're not particularly quick at typing. Freeform notes may be acceptable for short workshops focusing on a specific topic, but it's often a good idea to record your workshop in a table or a spreadsheet template. The different column headings encourage a methodical, consistent approach and ensure that nothing is missed out. The resulting notes are also easier to understand and gaps hopefully will be more obvious. It's usual for the notes to be made visible to the workshop team, though the use of a projector or a display screen uh, allows this. This allows for people to check the notes as you go along and make corrections and avoids having to have detailed lengthy reviews of the notes after the workshop. If you are conducting a workshop across multiple locations, e.g. Um, so by screen sharing, then consider digitally recording the session as well so that you can refer back to it. It's also a good idea to have a system in place for items where you need to go back and tidy up after the workshop to save time during the workshop for itself. For example, if you discuss a point and decide it's essentially the same as one discussed earlier, you can just record in the notes, see earlier, copy discussions from there to here. Using capital letters or an asterisk or similar, each time you make such an instruction to yourself makes life much easier when you're tidying up the notes later. You can just scroll through the notes and easily identify all of the locations where you need to do some copying and some tidying up. As an experienced facilitator, I always make sure I do two things with my workshop records. First, I will quickly read through them immediately after the workshop to add in any missed details before they disappear from my memory. Secondly, I will always save the rough copy of my notes exactly as they were recorded in the workshop and then do any tidying up of the notes on a separate copy of the file. That way, if there's any confusion over what was said exactly in the session, I can refer back to the rough as dictated notes. In addition to the notes of the actual discussions, there are some other key facts that need to be recorded during the workshop. First of all, you will need to keep a list of actions, recommendations and items to be discussed and resolved outside of the workshop. Make sure these are understandable, achievable, relevant and have an, an assigned person responsible for closing them out. Secondly, you need to keep a list of who was there including people who only participated on a part-time basis. Make sure you record their contact details in case you need to clarify things with them later. So, to conclude then, successful workshops don't happen by magic. They need thorough preparation and patience and concentration by the facilitator. They can be exhausting, but exhilarating at the same time. And successful completion can bring an awful lot of satisfaction. Further information around the general topic of this is available within Ristex Hazard Identification Module. And thank you very much for listening to this recording.